Last week, I had a chance to check out the CyberCab in person and talk with a bunch of the lead engineers from the project, from the various departments within the project, get to ask any question I want, and almost all of those questions got answers. I hung out for hours listening to my own questions getting answers, but also questions from everyone else there. A lot of really great questions, and a few that, uh, well... Those folks should have watched my videos. They wouldn't have had to ask. But this one, uh, this one is the video where I'm showing you the actual car itself, where we're going actually inside of it, where we're checking the whole thing out. This is part four in the series. There are three previous installments. They will be linked in the description below. There will be another part coming tomorrow on Tuesday and one more on Wednesday, a live Ask Me Anything at noon 30 Pacific on my channel on YouTube. Uh, and it'll be going out on X as well. Hope you're here for all of those. It'll be a bit of fun. I did want to start with a bit of an exciting part here. People were asking questions that I have not answered in these videos. Uh, one was, uh, I'm going to answer this one for the last time. This isn't exciting, but it's about the doors. Oh, the doors, you guys, the doors are going to have to be redesigned. This point here is too pointy right on the corner. It is too pointy. It's much too pointy. Guys, uh, get over it. The doors swing too wide. They don't get over it. Look at this. We're in a pop-up tent here. This is not my photograph, but this is another photograph. It's in a pop-up tent, and you can see they don't rise to the level of the pop-up tent. Overhead shelters will be fine. Most trees and branches will be fine. If not, walk forward five feet to where the branches aren't, and you'll be fine. Well, it's, but it's too wide. It's not. The car is 200 millimeters narrower than a Model S. Those doors do not swing wider than a Model S door, partly open, and nobody complains about those. Get out of the car somewhere else. It'll, it's going to change everything. You don't need to think, well, my, my garage is narrow. Why are you getting out of the car in the garage? Get out of the car and then have the car banish itself. There's another word I use for it, a little phrase, a little two-word phrase. Let the car F off. It can do that. Get out. Let it do its thing. So I will not be answering any more of your questions about this. In this video, I do point out uh, one, one thing that we learned at the event. You'll hear it on the footage uh, that we learned that the, the angle of the scissor might be adjusted slightly. That's it. That's as far as, well, they're going to have to redesign the whole thing. They're not going to. Well, the Model X stores are already a problem. Yeah. And they've remained in production. This is happening. Get over it. This corner is too pointy. Car doors are pointy. People have gotten hurt that way. We can't put on slippers. Uh, if you won't put on slippers, it doesn't make it my responsibility to carpet the entire world. I can only idiot proof things so far. Next question I got though, this was the actual good one was those tires, man, they look skinny. Are they skinny? In this picture, you can see they look a bit skinny. This picture is pre-production pre-prototype perhaps, this looks more like a render than a photograph. So this doesn't provide the answers, but the answers do exist. Here we go. The fronts are 215 slash 60 R 18s and the rears are 225 slash 60 R 21. What does that mean? So the first number 225 and 215 is the width in millimeters. So that means you're looking at what would that be? eight and a half ish inches on the front for width and eight, almost nine, 8.85 on the rear, something like that. Thereabouts slash 60 is what percentage of that width is the height of the sidewall? What a weird way to do it. You guys, what a weird way to measure it. So because the hubcap, sorry, the arrow cover, is so large you can't quite tell the size of the wheel itself and because of the gold paint it's misleading the gold paint i don't think is going to make it to production i think it just looks cool but that's not load bearing that's not structural that's just kind of a an after effect you can kind of see some paint drips there if you really look it looks cool it's fine so what is what is 60 percent of those two numbers we're talking um on the front the sidewall would be five inches and on the rear, it'd be like five and a half, 5.3, maybe very, very substantial. That's a lot of, that's a lot of sidewall for a comfy ride to put that in perspective. If we look at the model Y from the factory, let's take the cushiest tire configuration, the 19 inch, you've got a 255 slash 45 R19. Oh, and I should mention that R19, because remember we're doing millimeters here. The R19 is the size of the wheel in inches. Mm. So I've got millimeters percentage an inch. It's a flawless system 
only the Americans could come up with something this clever. Uh, so what we're looking at is a 255 slash 45. That means that uh, the rear, uh, the front uh, and rear tires on a, uh, for example, Model Y long range like I have, is uh, you've got a 19 inch rim, the tires are 10 inches wide, and the sidewall is four and a half inches. Four and a half inches isn't that much considering we were just talking about five, five and a half inches on the cyber cab, which weighs a lot less. So much less weight. It's going to be like a thousand pounds less than a model three with five, five and a half inches of, of cushion. That is a nice soft tire. The other thing I wanted to mention in this video is that the, there's a really cool looking, um, a really cool looking thing with the fenders. The fenders do not have trim. Uh, why would you why would you want trim so if we look at the model uh, three and y here you'll notice on the model three at the rear tires i think i can make this a little bigger yeah that's how big we're getting the rear tires have uh the front and rear wheels there is no trim over the arch but on the model y there is why would you add trim it's a visual trick if you don't use trim the ratio of wheel to car looks wrong and people don't like it. Uh, we can find some examples of that in the wild. Here's Kia. And what they've done is make a material painted bit of trim to alter the shape of the car, which is a more expensive solution. But on this Toyota, you can see they just put black trim. Black trim, it just changes the perception of the size of the wheel arch. And some manufacturers take it uh, to quite an extreme. Uh, here's the Subaru Solterra. Wow. I don't care for that. That is pretty terrible. So on the interior, I did want to give a couple more little nuggets. Ease of cleaning. Uh, there's no door pockets. Uh, I've been asked, is there a place to inductively charge the phone? There is not, because that is a place to inductively leave your phone behind. Maybe that's something that could be added later. Uh, the uh, door pockets do not exist. There are no door pockets. There is no glove box. So when it comes to cleaning out this car, it's done. It's easy. There's three pieces of glass to get fingerprints off of. There's a seat and a floor to vacuum, and you're done. That's it. There's uh, very few places for fingerprints, really just the screen, the buttons. You can make them fingerprint resistant. There's no place for crumbs or phones or loose change to really accumulate. They don't, there's no gap in the seats. You can eliminate that so that the phones and stuff don't slide down in between the seats. And so while there is no charging, they have said, yes, it w you can bring your own entertainment to your car. And maybe that will be through the app where you can just it's you already use the app to get the car to get in this particular ride. Maybe it just syncs up and says, ah, I got your Spotify playlist right here. If not, maybe it'd be Bluetooth either way. So support. Uh, thank you guys so much for uh, your decision to support. Thank you for uh, subscribing. Thank you for uh, all the help you've um, given me to make this video series and the ones before it possible. I'm uh, over 2000 videos in it's been four years and uh, I appreciate you guys being here for the journey. So remember, Wednesday, uh, noon 30 is the Ask Me Anything. One more in the series after this one. But let's get some footage of the actual car itself from the actual event and get into it. And remember that some of the things I'm saying in the video have not been confirmed yet because I have not yet had the conversation with the engineers. But it's coming and you can get some real close up looks at all that. See you there. So we're here at the big event. Yes, that's right. The Cyber Cab, see it, touch it. But there's quite a crowd. I don't know if you can tell, but it is quite a crowd. And uh, <laughs> I don't know how I'm ever going to get into it. I lie, of course, uh, because uh, rumor has it I was here hours ago and actually already did. Why don't we take a look at that first? So here we are checking out the cyber cab. And how cool is it? So there are still some rules on me. Uh, material, you know, hood lining. The headliner I mean. It's just cloth. It's nice. It's got a little. Ooh, it's got a sound system. I didn't even realize. Of course, it's got a sound system. Why wouldn't I think that? Now it is. The legroom is ample. Dare I say ridiculous? The dash is very comparable to what you'd already see on a Tesla. Monitoring camera. Make sure hobos are not puking. Uh, which is, I don't know. Maybe that's something I should think about, worry about. 
have some ideas about. This back area, gosh, I can't see anything. It's so dark. But it is just a cloth wall that goes down to a shelf. If you were to try and put seats back there, yeah, there's absolutely no headroom. The roof falls off quickly. Well, you just move the seats forward a bit. Nah, I don't think, I don't think the seats would do that. I don't think they'd let you do that. Cool demo. I'm not going to touch because, you know, I'm being very respectful. Sun visors, nice, magnetic, very good. Why is it magnetic? I swear I felt a magnet. It's up here in the headliner. Nice. Is this a light or a button? That's a light. Go ahead and flip this up because it looks nicer. And that is all kinds of cool. And these doors, we'd heard that there was no electronics in it. But I'm going to look and see if there's any kind of pin system. Transmission. There's, oh, it would be, there's the wire. It's right back behind there. That's clever. So it does have power into the door. Cameras are in a different spot. And they did a great job of making the wheels look nicer. These are what I'm sure they meant to have for the demo, but couldn't get it done. So the question is, are these doors swinging wider? And I guess all the way open like this? Yeah, yeah, they are. Boy, but only just. And in a lot of cars, you wouldn't open your door to full swing, I suppose. But later, we should find out from the engineer just how final this version is. I'm going to get sneaky here. and Yeah, that's, that's plastic or carbon fiber, which is very cool. Yeah, there's a lot of elegant simplicity. Oh, of course, you've got a light here for safety. These are great. Yeah, you can see the back wheels are bigger than the front wheels. That is the coolest. Yeah. Now we talked about this a bit on the channel, how this line is easier to get right than a normal line and how there's a lot of simplicity things that will make it easier. This, this line right here will give you uh, rain deflection back to this crack where it comes out but like this very cheap to build this very cheap to build and you can still make them structural this is not tinted this is a opaque piece of plastic which is very cool yeah and if i have more thoughts i will get to them but the big one is single motor dual motor front or rear got our Window switches there in the middle, next to the cup holders, and an armrest right there. These seats, certainly handmade. Ooh, they're even a little sparkly. That's fun. Okay. So I guess the question is, was the 12 hour drive worth it? And I gotta say, yes, yes. Hopefully this music is not overpowering, but we will find out. So now it's after all that stuff, and I'm doing the official the official walkthrough, sit-in, that sort of thing. And uh, I'm going to share with you the parts that I was not allowed to record, but I was allowed to listen to. I think I'll hold this because I'm concerned that the music in here will get me demonetized. Here comes the rope, here comes the rope. Yay! All right. So the first question is, uh, how easy is it to get in? This door is huge. So let's just, yeah. Hop in. That is uh, mobility easy. Now the thing is, these seats will adjust because they must adjust, according to the engineer, the lead engineer, of whom I have a picture, which is up right now. They must adjust for NHTSA reasons because there is a airbag safety zone. You have to be in the right zone for the airbags to work properly. Uh, this is, <laughs> yeah, this wall is structural. We did confirm it is structural. You cannot remove it. It would, it would have to be a different car. It is part of both protection from luggage flying into the cabin, but it's also structure for the vehicle. So yeah, that wall ain't going nowhere. You ain't putting back seats in this car. I asked very point blank, can this car become meat driven? And the answer was a resounding no. The next thing I asked about was these wheels. 
uh, these wheels may end up remaining this size because uh, of rolling resistance. The added weight is not as big of a deal as we thought, and the added weight, uh, the, the, the difference is rolling resistance. They have better rolling resistance, and the added cost of the tires and the wheels is less than the cost of the electricity over time. I did ask about the 5.5 miles per kilowatt hour, and I said, that seems sandbagged. Is that sandbagged? And he said, that is worst case scenario. Another thing to notice is that in the front, the front of the car is wider than the back of the car. The back of the car is teardrop shaped. Uh, there is no way to get from the back to the front. Can't even put in a little hole for dogs. But another neat thing is the amount of parts they reduced. If you look at the trunk lid here, you will see that instead of steel uh, stamped on, uh, stamped and then welded on or whatever, it is molded plastic affixed to the plastic. And we did ask that plastic, is it gonna still be plastic? Is it gonna be carbon fiber? And the answer was, it could be aluminum, but it's not gonna be stainless steel. It could be aluminum, it could be plastic, it could be carbon fiber. We haven't settled yet. Uh, this is wrapped carbon fiber because it was easy. And these were made at the design studio in Los Angeles, California. I think that's all I need to share. Getting the cameras configured uh, was very easy. No, I'm here to, no, no, no. I'm here to. Oh harass. my God, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. I'm so famous. <laughs> I'm so famous. So yeah, I get this all the time. It, it happens all the time. You had a question for me? I, I really didn't. I just wanted oh, to harass oh, you. Oh, okay. I just wanted to harass the Prez himself. Uh, President Joe of uh, the Tesla owners of San Joaquin Valley. He's uh, here, in case you hadn't noticed from him harassing me in other videos. We have some fun. Yeah. People out here having a good time. Yeah. So uh, the doors I asked, are these the final doors? Could they just be regular doors? And the answer is no, not regular doors, but they may want them to scissor up at a sharper angle uh, so that they clear better. And they may just load the inside rim with like reflective tape or lights for pedestrian, bicycle, and vehicle boat driving by safety. Uh, I asked point blank, will this be meat driven? The answer is no, there's no way. That would be a different car as we expected. Guys, thank you for tuning in. What did we miss? What did we misunderstand? Leave it all in the comments below. You know what you're doing. Comments are mandatory. Thank you so much uh, for the referrals. Using my referral credit is how I was able to get the miles I needed to actually get here. So thank you guys for that. It made this trip uh, quite affordable. And thank you to my buddy Jeff and Lisa for letting me crash at their place. Made it that much cheaper still. You guys, uh, what did I miss? What did I misunderstand? What questions do you have from someone who has finally seen and touched the gosh darn cyber cab? That's why they got to get me to events. These questions could have been answered a month ago. Ah, what are you going to do? All right.